Welcome to Pam. This is Courtney. I'll be your host for this episode. I would like to talk to you about crystals. What do we do with them? They're pretty, but how can we use them? They're actually very useful if you have the correct crystal for which the work that you're trying to do. Um, I want to talk to you right now about how to go about picking a crystal. What do you look for? Um, first of all, I would say if you're in a situation where you're looking at a bunch of beautiful stones as they are, um, you're probably going to want to just take a few deep breaths, ground yourself. Like anything in magic, um, with any kind of work that you're doing in that regard, try to ground yourself, get back down to your essence, try to, you know, tune out some of that frenetic energy that you have going on around you. We all have it. Take some deep breaths in through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. Just relax. It's good to do at any point in time, especially in traffic. Um, so anyways, if you are in a situation where you actually have physical access to the crystals, if you're going to be picking it out hands-on, I wouldn't just go for the prettiest one that's probably not true I might do that but what you should do is look around have a feel you know if you're able to hold them if you're allowed I would hold them just kind of try to commune with them maybe if you're in public don't talk to them out loud some people get weirded out by that I can't imagine why um but just just breathe um think about what you need the crystal for hold it in the palm of your hand feel if that's resonating with you right now. A lot of times you'll be called to work with certain things at certain times if it's what you need to be doing. So it doesn't always happen that way, but it is really nice when it does. And then you know, you know, without a doubt, you're on the right track. You have what you need to be doing, though, the work that you're meant to be doing. Uh, so that is one method. Just kind of try to see what resonates. See if you feel, feel any resistance to it, or if you feel like you're being pulled, like if there's any sort of magnetic energy between you and the crystal, um, then I would, I would probably definitely try to go with that one. Um, another way that is good, especially if you're like some of us and don't have as easy of access to crystals or maybe affordable crystals, online is a wonderful resource, I would just try to get from a reputable buyer um, or seller. I mean, I imagine where they get it from would be important as well. But anyway, <laughs> um, I would maybe look up a reference manual. I have several. Um, I have one that I really like, Sacred Energy Crystals. I use that a lot. Um, there are other texts. You don't have to stick with strictly magical tomes. You can work with geology books, natural history books, things like that. Um, get an idea of what you may be looking for. But the magical books are going to be the best for looking up correspondences. Um, sometimes you can work with the color correspondences. A lot of times they overlap. If the crystal is known for having a certain color characteristic, which not always depends on the environment that they were produced in. Um, sometimes you can get different mineralogical influences going on and you'll have different colors. But sometimes you get the same, like in the case of, say, Malachite. Um, that one is known for, or is frequently used for, um, prosperity, fortune, things like that. Spells regarding financial security. Um, if you were wanting to use something like that, the stones are, I, I can't think of an instance where I've ever seen one that wasn't. A beautiful banded green color. Um, so in that case they do overlap uh, the colors and the mineral like the energetic correspondences. But yeah, we just if you don't have access to books, I mean always check your local library. They're amazing and they can order from different libraries in the same system. Check into that. It's wonderful. Um, if you just need to look online, there are a lot of really good references as well for correspondences. Um, just make sure you cross-reference. 
uh, also I would, this is just personal <laughs> uh, pet peeve, but make sure what the mineral is composed of is not toxic because I think sometimes people don't realize what the composition is and while it can be wonderful for magical uses, I want to keep you healthy as well. Um, okay, so separately, let's see. The other tip that I would say when choosing a mineral or you know crystal to work with, or even a rock, sometimes I use fossils, we'll get into that later, but <laughs> I would see if there's any personal sort of significance. Um, did you go on a wonderful hike with a loved one and respectfully collect a you know piece of the nature out there you know, in instances where it's allowed? Um, some state parks and national parks have different regulations, but if it was somewhere that you weren't damaging the natural environment, you, you picked up a stone, and it holds a lot of that psychic energy from the time that you had, the area that you were in, maybe it was by a beautiful clear lake, and it holds that sort of just flowing water, emotional cleansing energy. I would use that, even if it's, you know, not a typical stone for the work that you're doing, um, I would, I would see what you could do with that. I mean, the most important thing is yourself and the connection that you have with the components that you're using for your ritual. Now, as far as getting into crystals and their specific correspondences as, you know, is known worldwide or in different communities what what the typical connotations of them are i will have to get into that in more detail in later episodes please let me know if there's any specific stones you would like to hear about um i'll be starting with some of the ones that are a little bit more general maybe it'll be easier for most of us to get our hands on um but until then i will see you happy witching <laughs>